Hi guys, it's Alex from Mono. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. I thought I'd do something a little bit fun today. A little bit of a break from reviewing, reviewing, reviewing. It's nice to switch things up a little bit. So I thought I would do a video where I sent my favorite celebrities. I collect a really cool fragrance magazine called Nee. It's from France. Uh, I've done quite a few videos about them actually, but what I've done is I've taken an idea. In every issue that they release, there's a little section called the Fantasy Boutique. And what it is, is they pretend like a famous person, dead or alive, has come into a perfume shop and then they match a scent with them. So it got me thinking, I want to scent my favourite celebrities. So I'm gonna. I challenged myself to only pick things that I currently have in my collection, otherwise it would have been really easy. Plus I wanted to show you guys some bottles as well. They're all here. I challenge you to do it, it's not as easy as you think. Some of these were really difficult. But anyway, without further ado, let's start talking about the famous people. So, the first celebrity on my list is someone that I consider to be my favourite singer probably in the world. Her name is India Ari, she's from uh, Georgia, and I chose for her Wicked Good by Gallagher Fragrances. The reason I chose this one is not only is India a really spiritual person, um, she is very proud of the gorgeous colour of her skin. She has a song called Cocoa Butter, she has a song called Chocolate High, and she has a song called Brown Skin as well. Her voice is like chocolate, it's like smooth, buttery, gorgeous chocolate. So I chose Wicked Good because this is a sweet, gorgeous cocoa fragrance. And there's lots of Tonka in this one as well. It's really, really gorgeous. There's a lot of vanilla as well. So it's a sweet, lovely perfume that's centered around chocolate. And when I think about India Ari's voice in particular, it's like melted chocolate to me. So I chose Wicked Good by Gallagher for India Ari. The next celebrity on the list is uh, the granddad I've never had, and it is none other than Sir David Attenborough. When I thought about him, I really wanted to give him a fragrance that would be super gentlemanly, a little bit dandy, fougere style, barbershop sort of fragrance, but then I realised I don't own any fragrances like that, so I had to dig a little bit deeper. I chose Entre Ciel et Mer by Pierre Guillaume for David Attenborough. The reason being, um, you know, he does so much for the planet, a lot about the seas, the oceans. I mean, he does a lot about everything really, but a lot of his focuses and a lot of his more recent programs that we've had in England have been about the conservation of coral reefs and things like that. So I chose Entre Ciel et Mer by Pierre Guillaume. It means between sky and sea. This fragrance is an aquatic, uh, but it's not a usual aquatic. It has real Pacific algae in it, sea salt, a bit of pear as well. Um, it smells like a, the breeze on a sea air. It's got a little bit of a suntan lotion from someone else. If you've been laying on a beach before and you get a breeze and someone else has just put sun cream on, mingled in with the salt and the air, so I chose Between Sky and Sea for the beautiful and lovely Sir David Attenborough. The next person is Jessica Lang. So I really only fell in love with her when I watched the second, well, well the first couple of seasons of American Horror Story. I don't know if anyone's seen that. I know she's an, an actress from way back. She's been in The Postman, Always Knocks Twice and Cape Fear. And I've now since gone back and watched all of her older films. But I love her as a, a, a who she is. She's so classy. She's so elegant. She's refined. And of course, she's an amazing actor. So I wanted to give her something that I consider throwback, elegant, classy, and perfection. So I gave her the original Fendi fragrance by Fendi. This was actually a gift from um, the lovely Margie. Thank you so much, Margie. Oh my gosh. This is, this would fit Jessica Lang perfectly. I think if she was in the room with me, I would just feel her presence and how refined and cool she is. So obviously I don't know her, I'm just going off what I think. But this is a really nice powdery um, fragrance, which is kind of related to Dolce & Gabbana Red Cap for me in many ways, but this is somehow softer and um, yeah, the reason I chose it is because, yeah, pure elegance, refinement and gorgeousness, which is Jessica Lang. The next person is Stevie Wonder. 
Oh my gosh, this man. He's literally like an angel sent from above, isn't he? Well, to me, he is anyway. His music really touches me on such a profound level. It makes me cry. His style of musicality is unrivaled, unparalleled. His signature is just so amazing. So I chose for him Samsara because it's my signature fragrance, but for many other reasons too. I didn't choose this one for the way it smells. I chose it more for the meaning. So samsara in Sanskrit is about rebirth. It's about reincarnation. And Stevie Wonder has a song called Higher Ground, which is about the same subject. It's about reincarnation and his view on it. He wrote the song and then he got into a near fatal car accident and it changed his opinion on life. It got him thinking about rebirth, your consciousness having a second chance. So he feels like the song came to him at the right time. So also, this fragrance is a masterpiece in my opinion. I don't say that word very often. And his music, a lot of the songs that he's created are pure masterpieces. I just absolutely love him. He's joyous. So I don't think this would really suit him. I mean, he can wear it if he wants. Stevie, just come and try it. It's the vintage, by the way. You can, you can, you can, you can have it if you want, as long as you sing me a song live but samsara favorite fragrance one of my favorite singers masterpiece rebirth all of that so stevie wonder this one's for you the next celebrity is clopin and he is from the disney movie uh, hunchback of notre dame he's actually my favorite disney character there is and he was a tricky one to send i will say so he is the narrator of the movie he is kind of villainous as well. He's not the villain of the movie. The villain of that movie, Hunchback of Notre Dame, is probably the most evil villain that Disney have ever created. It's Frollo. But Clopin is my favorite character because he's a jester. Um, he is very vibrant, full of life, but he's also a bit on the dark side. He was tough to scent, but I chose for him Fragonard by Fragonard. The reason I've chosen this one for him is I see him as kind of metrosexual. He's a little bit camp. Um, he's over the top. And I wanted to create something that was the most French smelling perfume that I had. And Fragonard by Fragonard is extremely French smelling. <laughs> I got this when I went to France as well. And the colors kind of match him a little bit. All right, that might be a reach. But uh, like I said, he was a tough one to scent. So this is, um, if you like an A&A by Cacherelle, it's kind of like a dupe for that. But I, I actually prefer this perfume to an A&A. &A. So this one is for Clopin from Hunchback of Notre Dame. The next celebrity is Alaska. If you don't know who Alaska is, she is a famous drag queen from RuPaul's Drag Race. She is my favorite drag queen ever to have been on that show. And I chose for her Alien by Terry Mugler. The reason I chose this is because Alaska herself is a self-confessed person from another planet. She says that she comes from the planet Glamazon, so she's not even from Earth. So Alien is the one I chose for her. Also, it's a pretty bad bitch fragrance. It's quite intense. Um, Alaska is quite an intense person. She's very weird, very unusual. She's kind of like an alien. Sick sense of humor, very vulgar, but amazing. I love Alaska. If you ever watch this, Alaska, you can have this as well. Come around, we'll have a we'll have a kiki. The next celebrity is Wembley Fraggle from Fraggle Rock. <laughs> Fraggle Rock remains to be my favourite ever program from when I was a child up until now. I still own the box set of all of the episodes on DVD. It was I had the bed covers of Fraggle Rock, which apparently my mum tells me I wouldn't let her wash ever. I wouldn't let her take them off of my bed because I loved my Fraggle Rock bed cover so much. And Wembley is my favourite Fraggle because I identify with him a lot. He is uh, a worry wart. He worries excessively about things that don't need to be worried about and stresses himself out. He's kind of indecisive and he's oh so cute. I chose for Wembley Bat. If you don't know who the Fraggles are, they are these Jim Henson puppet people that live in caves. So I chose Bat for, for Wembley because 
This is what I imagine him to smell like. He wears a tropical shirt with palm trees on it. He lives in a cave and that is just that. It smells like dank caves. It's got a lot of tropical fruits. Either of the formulations of bat would work for Wembley. The other one more so, it's kind of more banana-y. This one's a little bit more like guava. But this is exactly what I imagine Wembley to smell like if he walked up to me, which would be so cool. I would shake his little furry hand and I would say, hey, we're the same, me and you. So bat for Wembley Fraggle from Fraggle Rock. The next celebrity is Walt Disney. He is one of my, or well, he still is one of my most favorite people in the world. He's kind of like a controversial celebrity, I guess, because of some of the things he did and said and all of that stuff. However, I worked for the Walt Disney Company for five and a half years. It is ingrained in me. I am a Disney person. I can't help it. I love everything Disney. So I gave Walt Disney Pink Phoenix by Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. The reason I chose this one for him is for the way it smells. It's not to do with any meaning. I don't consider him a phoenix or anything. Although it would be so good if he rose from the ashes and came back to life and made more films. Oh my gosh, that's, that's really, really cool. I gave him Pink Phoenix because this fragrance, I wore this when I went to Disneyland. It's kind of, it fits with the way that Disneyland smells. If you've ever been to Disneyland or Walt Disney World, when you go to Walt Disney World and you walk down Main Street USA, you get the smell of sugar and cakes and candy floss and all those kind of things. And this fragrance is just that. It's got a doll head kind of smell. It's got strawberry in it. It's got pear, it's got honeycomb, it's got vanilla. It smells like the treats of Disney World and it smells like the air on Main Street USA. So that's why I chose Walt Disney for this one. The next celebrity is Seymour from The Little Shop of Horrors. Um, why is he my favourite celebrity? The Little Shop of Horrors is my favourite movie of all time. No other film do I like more than The Little Shop of Horrors. From the days of Fraggle Rock, when I was a child, I used to watch this film every day. I still watch it on a regular basis now. It's the reason for a lot of my musical taste comes from The Little Shop of Horrors. It's the reason I like um, black women singers and R&B and stuff like that. And Link, it's written by two of the most famous Disney uh, songwriters there is, Howard Ashman and Alan Menken. They wrote the songs for Little Shop of Horrors and they wrote loads for Disney as well. So Seymour is the geek that gets the girl. You have to love him. He's a geeky guy, a little bit down on his luck and goes through so much, but ultimately he gets the girl. So the scent I chose for him, I chose this one because this is how I think he would smell at the end of the movie. It's Nuit de Bacalit and it's by Naomi Goodsir. The end of the movie is a scene where the plant literally takes over the whole film. It explodes, there's soil everywhere, there's vines going all up, all over. All over Seymour himself, it captures him, it captures the woman. I won't ruin the end for you if you haven't seen that film. If you haven't, go and watch it. But this fragrance is what I think Seymour would smell like after all of that chaos. It's a chaotic, earthy, green, carrot seed, leather, tuberose, um, smells like a greenhouse kind of smell. It smells like Audrey too went crazy in this room. That's kind of why I chose it. So after he comes out of the rubble and he's all hair messed up, this is what Seymour would smell like. And I love him. And I love Rick Moranis anyway. The second to last celebrity is Brandy. She is another one of my favorite singers. I've been listening to her since the 90s when she came out. Oh my gosh, I love her. Her voice is angelic. And I chose this fragrance for her because if you're not familiar with her or her style of singing, she has a very unique way of recording her music. She sings over herself in many, many layers. It must take her about five days to record one song because she'll sing and then she will layer herself seven, eight, nine times over the top to create this beautiful, rich, harmonious sound. And I listen to her all the time. I love her very much. So I chose Nightingale for her. She was quite a difficult one to choose, but obviously Nightingales have angelic singing voices. And Nightingale is a very complex, multi-layered fragrance. It's a Sheepra. I think this would just really smell really good on her as well. So that's another person. I'm inviting you over, Brandy. Come and let's have a jam session and just sing for me, please. Thanks, that would be great. 
absolutely stunning fragrance that's Japanese inspired. It's Zoologist, my favorite brand. So favorite singer, favorite brand, goes hand in hand. It's plum blossom, it's rose, it's woody. There's a bit of iris in it. It's super powdery, just massively elegant. I mean, it's in my top three Zoologist perfumes out of all of the fragrances they make. So I chose this one for Brandy for the layering technique that she uses when she sings. And I think it will smell nice on her too. So on to the last person. And the last person on my list is the beautiful Leanne Le Havas. I realise that not a lot of people might know who she is. If you do, we're going to be friends. She's another favourite singer of mine. She's from London. She's not world famous, but I hope that she will be one day. I have met her. I have seen her perform live three or four times. I consider her an English rose. She's so demure when she's on stage. She's very well spoken, but her voice is incredible. She takes a lot of inspiration from Lauren Hill, other singers that I already like, so I knew that I was gonna like her. She's a little bit rock as well, but mostly she's kind of folky. So I chose for her Lyric by Amouage. I mean, it's in the title, right? Lyric, musicality. But this is a rose perfume and I see her as an English rose. This fragrance is beautiful. It's a little bit waxy, powdery, soft rose, really elegant, demure, like Leanne herself. And I think this would smell gorgeous on her. She can also come round. They can all come round. We can just have a party. It'd be so great. I'll cook. I'll cook, guys. I'm really good cook. So yeah, I chose Lyric for the wonderful, amazing Leanne Le Havers. So that's it. That is me scenting my favourite celebrities. I encourage you guys to try and do it. It's not as easy as you might think, but it is fun to think about it and piece together ideas for what that person might wear or the inspiration of that person. It's fun for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm out from my note, trying to make the world smell better. One video at a time. Speak to you guys soon. Goodbye.